SpaceX has officially reached a major milestone on the road to Flight 10, and it comes with a record-breaking achievement. But that's not all. Beyond just preparing for the next launch, Starship has also taken a significant step forward in shaping its future operations in Florida. Meanwhile, Japan's latest lunar lander has unfortunately failed during its landing attempt. We'll break it all down in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's safe to say that B-16's recent progress has become the center of attention. Following the excitement of Flight 9, many were eagerly awaiting a follow-up, something powerful enough to shake Starbase once again. That moment finally arrived, and it didn't disappoint. Initial anticipation rose when the first static fire attempt encountered a few technical issues and was aborted. However, as mentioned before, there was always going to be a second chance, and SpaceX seized it. Leading up to the test, all the usual procedures were in place, system venting, propellant loading, and engine chilling. The fuel configuration remained consistent with prior tests, including a third of the methane tank and a full tank of liquid oxygen. A key signal that the test was imminent came when the water deluge system activated, flooding the pad with approximately 350,000 gallons of water. This helped reduce thermal and acoustic stress during ignition, protecting the launch pad infrastructure. With all systems go, the moment we'd been waiting for finally arrived. All 33 Raptor engines on Booster 16 ignited, delivering a staggering 7,000 tons of thrust. The static fire lasted around 9 seconds, consistent with previous tests. Unlike some earlier firings that varied thrust mid-test to assess flexibility, this one seemed to focus on sustained output. It's likely that SpaceX is already confident in the engine's flexibility and instead wanted to push their endurance and stability. Following the test, there were no reports of anomalies or issues, signaling a successful outcome. This is a major step forward for SpaceX as it continues its preparations for Starship's Flight 10. But beyond just a successful test, this event also marked a new record. The static fire of B-16 occurred just nine days after Flight 9, breaking the previous record held by B-13, which was tested 11 days after Flight 5. This quick turnaround surprised many, including longtime observers. After Flight 9, issues with the booster quick disconnect system were noted and it was expected that repairs and adjustments might take some time. Instead, SpaceX managed to address the problems and resume operations faster than anticipated, giving them a valuable head start on the next launch schedule. It's still unclear whether B-16 will undergo any additional tests, such as single or dual engine firings, to simulate a future landing scenario using just two engines, a potential backup method for unexpected flight anomalies. If such tests are planned, they'll need to happen quickly. A road closure is already in place for June 7th from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., signaling that Booster 16 is likely already en route back to the Mega Bay by the time you're watching this. There, it will undergo post-test inspections and outfitting with critical systems, including the hot staging ring and the flight termination system. With B-16 now moving into its next phase, attention shifts to Ship 36. It's expected to complete engine installation and head to the Massey test site for static fire testing in the near future. Testing for S-36 may be even more rigorous, with multiple static fires planned, using varying amounts of fuel and different thrust levels. These tests will be crucial in preparing the ship for tasks such as relighting engines in space. Once S-36's testing is complete, it'll return to Mega Bay 2 for further inspection and final integration steps. Throughout this process, SpaceX will continue to monitor results, flag any anomalies, and implement adjustments and upgrades where needed. Every detail counts in ensuring the mission's success. So what do you think? Will Flight 10 launch this month? Let me know with a yes or a no in the comments section down below, and don't forget to share your prediction. Then, like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on every chapter of SpaceX's incredible journey. Now, let's take a look further into the future. Once Flight 10 achieves success, it'll mark the beginning of a much stronger chapter for Starship, and SpaceX is already making key preparations to meet the demands of that future. One of the most exciting developments is a major step forward in bringing Starship operations to Florida. Recently, the U.S. Department of the Air Force released a draft environmental impact statement focused on repurposing Launch Complex 37 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to support future Starship launches. LC-37, which formerly served as the launch pad for the ULA Delta IV Heavy, has remained inactive since the rocket's retirement in 2023. This site is now being considered as a dedicated Starship launch platform, a move that could drastically expand SpaceX's operational footprint on the East Coast. The draft E 
AIS outlines the potential for transforming LC-37 into a fully operational Starship launch site. The document is currently open for public review through July 28th. According to the draft, all environmental categories are classified as having no significant impact except for noise and vibration, an expected outcome for a vehicle as powerful as Starship. With these results, the EIS appears on track for approval. But beyond the paperwork, the real highlight is the scale of what this would mean for Starship's future. If the plan is approved, LC-37 could support up to 76 Starship launches per year. This includes 76 static fire tests for Starship, another 76 for the Super Heavy Booster, and a total of 152 landings, 76 each for the upper stage and booster. Combine that with the previously approved 44 annual emissions from LC-39A, and you're looking at a total of 110 Starship flights per year launching from Florida alone. What's even more significant is that LC-37 is poised to become the more capable of the two launch pads. According to a comparison chart included in the EIS, LC-37 is the only facility that meets all operational requirements for high-frequency Starship missions. LC-39A falls short due to its dual use. It also supports Falcon 9 launches which limits its availability and infrastructure flexibility. The EIS also details plans for constructing new support infrastructure at LC-37, including a new launch tower, fuel storage and delivery systems, landing zones, and other essential components. This development points to a long-term commitment and vision for Starship's role in Florida's launch ecosystem. Another standout element from the report is the updated Starship design, likely version 3. According to the data, this next-gen variant of Starship would stand 493 feet or 150 meters tall, with Super Heavy measuring 263 feet or 80 meters tall, and the upper stage, the ship, reaching 230 or 70 meters. Fuel capacity would total 4,100 metric tons for Super Heavy and 2,650 metric tons for Starship. Notably, the booster would feature 35 Raptor engines, while Starship itself would have 9 engines. Combined, they would generate 103 meganewtons, or roughly 11,500 tons of thrust, from Super Heavy and 28 meganewtons, or about 3,100 tons, from the upper stage. These numbers show how Starship is evolving not just in mission cadence, but in scale, performance, and capability. The shift to more engines and greater thrust will be essential for heavy lift tasks, lunar missions, Mars cargo delivery, and more. Still, while the goal of over 110 annual launches in Florida is promising, it's important to note that such a high flight rate won't happen immediately. Even if the EIS is approved soon, SpaceX will need time to prepare, finalizing designs, securing contractors, and beginning construction. Until then, Starship launches will continue from LC-39A, where the launch tower already exists and is currently being upgraded with a new orbital launch mount. The vision is bold. The groundwork is being laid and the momentum is building. Starship's future in Florida looks bright. Let's watch closely as SpaceX opens the door to this next chapter in space exploration. Now, let's move on to an update on Japan's latest lunar landing mission. After months of space travel, Japan officially launched its landing attempt with the Resilience Lander on the 5th of June. Developed by the Japanese private company iSpace, Resilience was aiming to make a soft touchdown on the moon in the Mare Frigoris region, the so-called Sea of Cold, located on the near side of the lunar surface. The targeted landing time was 3.17 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, or 1917 GMT, on June 5th, which corresponds to 4.17 in the morning on June 6th in Japan Standard Time. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. The lander appears to have crashed into the moon, marking iSpace's second failed attempt at achieving a soft lunar landing. Telemetry from the spacecraft was lost roughly 1 minute and 45 seconds before the scheduled touchdown. Early data indicates that an equipment malfunction, specifically an issue with the laser rangefinder, may have prevented the lander from accurately gauging its altitude during descent. The scenario was strikingly similar to iSpace's first lunar mission back in April of 2023. During that attempt, the spacecraft also went dark shortly before landing, and the mission was ultimately declared unsuccessful. In a post-landing press conference, iSpace founder and CEO Takeshi Hakamata addressed the media with disappointment but transparency. We wanted to make Mission 2 a success, but unfortunately we were unable to land. Shortly after the apparent failure, iSpace posted an update on X, 
We are currently unable to establish communication with the Resilience Lander. I, space engineers, are currently in the Mission Control Center attempting to communicate with the lander. We will share an update via a media release within the next few hours. Later, a follow-up message provided more detail. As a result, the lander was unable to decelerate sufficiently to reach the required speed for the planned lunar landing. Based on these circumstances, it is currently assumed that the lander likely performed a hard landing on the lunar surface. A hard landing in this context means the spacecraft struck the moon at a much higher velocity than planned, most like destroying or severely damaging it. In such conditions, it is highly unlikely that the spacecraft could survive to carry out its scientific mission or deploy its secondary payload, the Tenacious Rover, developed in collaboration with the European Space Agency. The final confirmation came in a somber announcement from iSpace. As of 8 a.m. JST on Friday, June 6th, a communication with the lander was not expected to be restored. And we have determined that it'll be difficult to complete Mission 2 Milestone Success 9, which confirms the lunar landing and have decided to end Mission 2. Despite the outcome, this mission highlights just how difficult lunar landings continue to be. Since 2023, multiple attempts by nations and private organizations around the world have ended in failure, underscoring the immense challenges of operating in the harsh lunar environment. However, every setback brings with it new data and insights. While this iSpace mission did not succeed in landing, it contributes to the growing knowledge base required for future missions. Both the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and international partners like NASA will use the these experiences to refine their own strategies and systems. As the world moves closer to sending humans back to the moon in the coming years, especially under programs like NASA's Artemis, ensuring the reliability and safety of lunar landers, whether robotic or crewed, remains a top priority. These early efforts are laying the groundwork for that future. Every mission, successful or not, brings us one step closer. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.